Hi everyone, I am Hassan from Edge Educate and you are watching Learn Web Server IS in 30 minutes. In this video or lecture, we will learn the basics of IS. We will go over what's IS, how it works, we are going to install it on, on both Windows 10 client and Windows Server, we will go and host our websites, we will see how to work with bindings and application pools and much much more. When you finish this video, you will be able to start working with IS and start hosting your own websites. If you are ready, let's start together. But before, please, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the videos so you can get all the updates when I release new lectures and videos. Thank you and let's start. So what is IS or Internet Information Services? Let's make things simple by looking over this example. Let's say we have a web application or a website. It can be static or dynamic like ASP.NET or PHP. And now we need to make it available all over the world on the internet. So now, to bring the website online, obviously we have to host it in a web server. And whenever a user requests the website by trying to type its name in a web browser address, the request will be resolved by the worldwide DNS servers in order to acquire the server IP address. And then, it will route the user request to the target web server. Then, the web server is responsible for processing the request and replying back to the user on a form of HTML pages using HTTPS or HTTP protocol. Wait a little bit. What's the relation between IIS and what I am talking about? Simply, IIS is a Windows component that works as a web server. And it's responsible for hosting both web and FTP sites on your server. Very nice. Now, let's install IIS on both Windows 10 and Windows Server 2012 R2. Let's start with Windows 10. It's very simple. Let's open the control panel open programs then click on turn windows features on or off and here just check internet information services and click ok very simple let's wait a little bit for IIS to be installed now click close very nice let's open the start menu now and search for IIS. Here it is, open it, and this is the IIS management console. This where most our work will be in. Now let's install IIS on Windows Server 2012 R2. It's very simple. Just open Server Manager by clicking on the shortcut icon in the taskbar or just open the start menu and click on the Server Manager. Now click on Manage, Add Roles and Features. To add a role, select Role Base or Featured Base Installation and click Next. Here is my server I am installing on. If you are managing a remote server, then be sure to select the appropriate server. Now in the Roles list, go down and check Web Server IS Role. It will ask you to add some features related to IS. Just click Add Features. Now just continue to the Role Service tab. And here we have a list of all services related to IS role. I'm going to install just some of the main features to work with the core of the IS. Just check ISP.NET 3.5 and 4.5. Also, I will select the management service that allows you to manage the server remotely. And I think this is enough. Later on, we will install each service as needed. Now click next. And here there is a small thing I want to mention which is related to Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8. When you try to add .NET Framework 3.5, the installation will ask you for the installation directory which is located on the Windows installation disk or ISO file. So now just click on specify an alternate source path and open your installation disk or ISO file. Then go to the sources folder, then SXS and copy this directory to the installation wizard. Okay, 
I think this is simple now. Let's click install and begin the installation. All right, awesome. Here we are, the installation finished. Let's close it. And as we can see now, we have an IS role is added to our main server manager dashboard in the left. Now we can click on tools, open internet information services manager here. And here we are. This is the main console. And here is the site section. We have the default website that is added automatically. Let's click on browse to test it. Very nice. This is the default website is working and everything is fine. Hi friends, here I am again. Just I want to mention something that this video is a part or a small part of my web server IIS master course on Udemy. If you are interested in learning more about IIS, about advanced options, about securing IIS, about high availability, about three case scenarios and much, much, much more, then you can find my course link in the description below if you want. Thank you and let's continue our course. Before going deep in the course, I want to talk about a small tool from Microsoft that's very important when it comes to managing IIS web server. It is the Web Platform Installer tool. Let's go directly into the topic and start by installing the tool to see how it works. Just open your web browser and search for Web Platform Installer. You'll find the first link on Google from Microsoft. Just open the link. And here in my case, it's version 5.0, the latest version. Click on free download and save the file and continue the installation. It's very basic. Launch the file, run. And here we are. This is the tool installed and ready to be used. As you can see here, we have products. We have applications in the products. We have server products frameworks, we have databases and tools, and so on. Basically, what this tool does, it allows you to install some components and models related to IIS and facilitate the work with these components in updating, installing, and so on. So as you can see here, we have in the applications, PHP, we have Python, we have Windows SDKs related to Azure, also we have WordPress, Joomla, Moodle and so on. We have a lot, a lot of applications and models that we can use simply with our IS server. Let's do an example. I will search for URL rewrite, which is a very important tool in IS. Don't worry about it now. Just I am testing the web platform installer tool. Just select it and click install. It will show you the prerequisites and what will happen. Just click accept and the installation will begin and everything will be done by the web platform tool. You don't worry about anything. Everything will be configured and installed using the tool. And this is what it makes it very powerful. All right, now let's start by creating our first website and see how to host it in the IS manager. Let's open IS, simply click on the server manager icon and click on tools. Then Internet Information Services Manager. If you remember here, we saw we have the default website in the site section and we opened it using the browser. It's localhost. Just write localhost in your browser address and this is our default website. So now let's create our own custom website. Just right click on sites and click add a website. All right, as you can see, we have to set the site name. The site name is the name that will appear here in the IS manager. As a best practice, set this site name as your domain name so it will be easier for management, especially if you have multiple websites on your server. So set a website name, I will set website1.com and the next thing we have to do is to set the physical path. Simply the physical path is where your website files are located. Here I will select my sample website in the inetpub folder directory in the C drive, which is a default path that comes with the web server manager. Select my path, web server one. Let's see where this is located. Open the C drive, inetpub, and here we have website one, and here is the website. Let's open the index page. It's a sample HTML. 
static website let's open it and here we are this is my sample website now the second option we have to set is the bindings bindings are very very important i will explain it a little bit but for now bindings is the method that the IIS uses to identify websites upon requests. So when a user requests a certain website using its host name or its IP address, the binding is responsible for identifying and getting the appropriate website upon that request. In the bindings, we have four things to set. The first one is the protocol type. We can set between HTTP and HTTPS if you are using SSL certificate for securing your website. We will talk about this later. The second thing we have to set is the IP address. You can set your website to open using a specific IP address or using any IP address on your server. I will keep it as all are assigned now. And the third thing you have to set is the port number. As you know, HTTP by default works on port 80. So it's not recommended to change this port except if you are using a private application that you want to secure with a certain port number, it's up to you. And now we have the host name. Simply, it is the domain name of your website or your subdomain. In my case, I will be using localhost since I am working with a lab environment just to test now our website. And here we are. So here we are, we create our new website, website1.com. Let's open it, click on browse and oops. We have opened the local host and the default website opened and not our new website. What happened? Simply, this happens because both websites have the same bindings. We have local host as a domain name or as a host name for both websites. So to fix this, we have to edit the bindings. So edit the bindings of our website and we have to change the host name to a certain canonical name for us. Since this is a lab and we don't have a public domain name to use, I will do a simple trick using the hosts file. All right, to do this, let's open Notepad as administrator. So open the start menu, go to Notepad and be sure to right click and run as administrator. Now click file and let's open the hosts file. Navigate to C, Windows, System32, drivers etc folder then click on show all files and here is the host file open it and here we are now let's add a record in this host file i will say 127.0.0.1 which is a local address let's map it to our domain name website1.com simply what this file is it somehow acts as a local DNS for your Windows server. So it can map an IP address to your domain name. In this way, when we map our domain to the local address, when the browser tries to access this domain name, it thinks that this domain is hosted locally. So it navigates to your local server to open it. I hope the idea is simple. Now just save the file and let's close it. Write website1.com in the in the bindings host name and let's now try to open our website. And very very nice. As you can see, we opened website1.com in our browser and everything is fine. So now we have two websites, our default website with local host, host name binding, and our hosted website, website1.com. You can simply right click on the website and click explore to open the physical directory and see your files. So this is it and this is how you can create your website, your own website and host it inside the IS server manager. All right, everyone. I hope you are enjoying my course and everything is fine. Okay. Let's consider we have a user requesting a certain website called www.web1.com. So whenever a user requests a website, the worldwide DNS servers will get the request and retarget it to the appropriate server on the internet. And this is done using the server's IP. 
So now we have selected the appropriate server which is hosting the website. Very nice. Now, inside this web server, we may have multiple websites hosted. So how the server will know which website the user is requesting? Very simple. This is done using the website's bindings. So here it comes, the roles of bindings. As I showed you before, we can use multiple parameters to identify or differentiate between websites on the same server. This can be by the domain name or the host name, like in our case where we are using web1.com as the host name, or maybe using the IP address or even the port number. We will see this in a little bit. Also, the IIS will know if the connection is secured using HTTPS protocol by looking at the configuration of the bindings for this website. I hope you got the point and how the bindings works in general. Let's now go back to our server to show you how to use these bindings and to show different scenarios. So firstly let's delete the default website since we are not going to use it again in our course. We will work with our custom websites. Now we have website1.com. Let's test it, open the browser, website1.com very very nice everything is fine now let's right click on the website and click on edit bindings select our binding and click edit here we have set the website to bind to a certain host name let's remove it now and select an ip address this is the default ip in our server and click ok and close this dialog now open the browser and let's type the ip address in the address bar as you can see now, our website is working but using the IP address and not the host name. Okay. Let's now do another thing, open the bindings again and now I will change the port number and set it to 81. Now, let's refresh our website using the same IP address but the website will fail to load. Why is that? simply because we changed the port to 81 in the bindings and by default the web browser is using port 80 to work with the http protocol so obviously it will fail to load the website so now if we want to fix this let's open the website but now just add a colon after the ip address and add 81 as a port number and awesome that's it now our website is working under port 81. I hope you got the point and everything is clear. When we create a new website in IIS, as you can see here in the wizard, automatically IIS will create an application pool for the website to work with. So what is an application pool? To make things simple, whenever you host a website on your web server, the website processing and execution will be done using a worker processor which is a part of the application pool. So for that, the application pool will automatically be created when you create a website. You can think of it as a logical container where the website will work inside. Now, each website can have its own application pool or you can create multiple websites that use the same application pool. All right, so here we are again in our server. We can find the list of application pools here by clicking on the application pools icon on the left. And here is the list of application pools on your server. Here, as you can see, we have website one, website two application pools, each associated with its own website. Now to add a new application pool, simply right click here and click on add application pool. Now set the name of the application pool you want and here we have two options, the framework and the pipeline mode. In general, if your application is using .NET, then select the appropriate framework from the list. If it's a PHP website or a website that is not using .NET, then you can use non-managed code. And the pipeline mode for now, set it to integrated and go for it. The classic mode is used in the IS6 for older websites. Now we can go to the advanced settings of any website and change the application pool you want to run your website on it. Very simple. 
Now let's see this. Open your web browser and let's open my website, website1.com. Now open Task Manager and go to the Details section. And here if we go down, you will see the WPW process. This is the process of the worker processor that is associated with this website application pool. You can see the username is website1.com, which is the identity of the website the application pool is running with. Let's now again open website2.com. And as you can see, we have another process created for this website with website2.com identity. So this is what I'm talking about. This is the processor or the worker processor that is associated with a certain website. Now, if these two websites were working with the same application pool, then we have one process only for both. If you want to monitor and see the worker processors that are working inside your IIS manager, just click on the server node and click on worker processors and here you will find all the worker processors running on the server. We can see the CPU usage, the process ID, the state, the private and the virtual memory and so on. Alright. Now, what is the main reasons for using application pools? As I mentioned before, we can create multiple websites with the same application pool. And we can create multiple application pools on the same server. This architecture will provide isolation for our websites. So isolation is the main reason for using application pools. So now we can use different frameworks like framework 2 in the first application pool and framework 4 for the other one. Or we can implement different security aspects or maybe apply different settings that corresponds to each group of websites. So we can have full isolation between websites. So if application pool as an example recycles, the other application pool websites will not be affected. Other thing you have to know, let's take this example. We have a website which have two folders containing two sections of or pages of your website. Let's say the services pages and the card pages. What you have to know is that you can divide a certain website into multiple application pools, like moving the services folder to an application pool and the card to other application pool, like application pool 1 and application pool 2 in this example. In this way, if you have a part of your website that has some bugs or maybe you are testing something new that may contain some bugs or may cause the application pool to reboot, then in this way, the second part of your website will not be affected. And this is very important if you are testing something as I mentioned. All right, now I want to show you how to install and configure FTP server on your web server in order to access your files and websites using FTP. First thing you have to do is navigate to the server manager and be sure to install the FTP server feature or role. Click on manage, add roles and features, navigate to the server roles and navigate down to web server and check FTP server. Expand it and check FTP accessibility also. Click on next, next, install. Just wait a moment. Now it's finished. Let's open again. Web Server Manager. Click on the server node. Now in the sites, just right click. And now we can have the capability to add FTP site. Let's add one. Let's name it Web1. FTP is an example. Select the physical path. I will say C INET pub website one as an example and click OK. Now click on next. Here you can select the binding as in the website. You can select any IP address and the port will be by default 21 that is used by FTP. So if you are using FTP on your server, please be sure to allow also port 21 in your, in your firewall. We can select the SSL to be used also, then it will be SFTP. Now I will use no SSL and I will start the FTP site. Let's click on next. Here you can select the authentication. You can set anonymous. Of course, you don't want to use anonymous authentication with FTP so anyone can access your data. So you have to use the basic authentication and select the users you want 
can select specified users and let's say as an example admin and we select the permission to read and write or maybe all, only read it's up to your architecture and click finish now you have this webs web ftp can be accessed remotely using an ftp client all right let's test our ftp now just open your browser and search for ftp client and you'll have a list of ftp clients you can download i am working with filezilla just now download filezilla client Click on download and download the software and install it. It's very simple. After installing the software, this FileZilla client, just open it. And now I will say localhost since I'm working locally here. Of course, here you set the IP of the server or the name of the server, your domain name. Just enter the username, which is admin, and set the password, which is the Windows administrator password. And we will use port 21 and let's click on quick connect. As you can see, this is our website here is listed and this is our files. FTP will help you if you want to update your data, your files or your website from directly synchronized from your local machine, which is the developer machine to the target website. You can synchronize directly by uploading, downloading files. As you can see, upload files and downloading files and so on. So this is how you can configure FTP service on your web server to access your websites remotely using FTP clients. Okay, before I end this video, I wanna show you how to install WordPress on your IIS server and I will show you the power of the web platform installer too. Just open your server node and click on web platform installer that we installed in the last lectures. Just double click to open it and wait a little bit for it to load. All right, now simply search for WordPress. And here it is. This is the WordPress application. Click on add and simply click install. Now it will ask you for the prerequisites. It says we need MySQL and it's not installed. Just select the password of the root and everything will be configured automatically. This is the root password of MySQL. Just put it here and click continue. And it will show you that it will install WordPress with MySQL for Windows. Just click I accept. And now just wait for the installation to finish. It's very simple. As you can see, this is the power of the web platform installer. If you want to do this manually, you have to download the MySQL connectors, MySQL SDKs, MySQL for Windows, install them and get the WordPress from its website, install them and configure them and so on. This will be done automatically using the web platform installer. For that, it's very important to install it on your IS server. Now just wait a little bit for the installation to finish. Wonderful! The installation is finished and now we are in the configuration section. Just select here new website and give it a website name. Let's say my WordPress. And this is the website name. Let's say WordPress. Let's name it WP. And let's set the physical path to my computer, C drive, INET pub, make new folder here. And let's say WordPress. And now let's click OK and set the bindings here. The IP address is all unassigned and port 80. And let's name the host name as www.mywp.com. So this is my host name. I will put this in the host file as I showed you in the lecture where we installed our first website. Now just open Notepad, run as administrator, and let's open the host file. It's in the C drive, Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. Click all files and here's the host file. And now I will get this host name and paste it down here. 127.00.1 and here we are. Let's save it and close this and click continue. And here we have to set some authentication keys that WordPress uses. We can use any phrases for now. Let's say I will put this phrase one free. 
Let's core it. WordPress. And let's copy it. Copy this here. And here. Just copy the security keys, salts, and click on continue. And the configuration will now start. As you can see, the installation is very simple using the web platform installer. Let's wait a little bit now. And awesome. As you can see, it shows you the password of your database, the username and the password. You can save these so you can use them later. Just put them somewhere else on your notepad or any file and click on finish. Very nice. As you can see, the browser will open automatically and this is my website. MyWP.com is opened automatically and this is the WordPress installation. Click continue and here the site title, the username and so on. You can continue the installation and start using WordPress using your IS server. Welcome again. I hope you enjoyed this mini course and you got some benefit and you can now start working with web server IIS. As I mentioned before, if you are interested in learning more about IIS and go more in details, please refer to the link in the description and I will be with you in the mastery course. Thank you for following. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, to like the video and to press on the bell for notifications. You can also view our other lectures. Thank you and see you in other videos.